What's up, guys? It's Team Solomon Circus here. We're back again for another live duel. On the left side here, we have Max. He's playing. Uh, he's playing Punk Therion. Uh, actually, it might be Punk. Yeah, it's Punk Therion. Um, I don't think there's any gold pride in it. And we're over on the right side here playing Despia, the best deck of the format. We ignore cash. We forget it's there. This is what we play. Um, we are using our brand new red sleeves on the main deck and the gorgeous royal. Uh, Dual Royale purple sleeves on the extra deck. Trying to flex out that max rarity extra there. We ain't looking at that Starlight Cartesia. No, thank you. Shuffling it up here, you know, making sure that it is. I believe this was round two at our locals on Wednesday night here. We're going to see some high rolls. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. That's our channel a lot. We are on the road to 2K. And yeah, let's dive in. So we're going to see the Punk going to start off with the uh, Field Spell here. And we're going to activate an E-Telly, summoning out the Zeomon. I can't believe this card's still at 3. Summoning out the Zeomon there. Being able to pay 600, activating its effects. So search for the monster, uh, searching for that Foxy Tune. And then you're going to be able to draw one card off that Field Spell as well. Talking about Cracked. Then they're going to draw... I just saw, thought I just saw Mothman there. Like, what the heck? Then we're seeing Argot system being discarded off by the Foxy. The summon out the Deer Note, which is so free. Argot system is like an amazing discard. Linking off or synchroing off with the Dram Drive here. Going to be able to search for most likely an Ogre. Remember for the Cherry Creature? Okay, so it looks like. This is the second time we've seen a punk player not search for a ghost ogre. Maybe they're opting to play more Chari Kuchai now to search for it so they can continue the plays. We're going to see the um, session, the field spell, banish the deer note to summon out the Chari Kuchai. Activating the Chari Kuchai effect here, which will allow them to synchro summon out into the fish. Activating the fish effect here. To be summoning out the Deer Note as well as the Wagon. Then we're going to be Synchro Summoning again into the Diabolos. And this card is crazy. We're going to dump here the uh, the Lily Borea. And then we can XYZ with the Synchros into the Sargus. Sargus effect is going to be activating here. I believe switching for the Empress. Switching for the Empress Snake. I threw over that left card was like kind of trash, and I realized, okay, it's just a combo piece. We're going to see the effect targeting the Liliboria. Liliboria is going to search for the field spell. The field spell is going to activate, searching for the Regulus there. And our boys a negate. Then we can go into like another, another rank 8 here. They could possibly go into like number eight, uh, 38. There's a few different plays that they could make here. We're going to go for Regulus targeting the Liliboria. Going to equip it. And they do have a quick synchro during our turn as well, but... And are they going to overlay here for... They're going to act with the effect here, summoning out the Liboria. They're going to be able to XYZ summon here. Going into the Vampire. Trying to see what deck we are on here. Can activate the effect, and we're going to do two Zero Polys, and it's four, and we do five. Unfortunately, you know, we accidentally put the Sword in here there, uh, which is kind of. I mean, we wish we hit Sword in here. We did hit the, the Albaz, the Albion, which is now an Albaz Engrave, and then the Kit, as well as the Super Poly. We do appreciate that little shine that you gave the card. We appreciate that all the time. You know, when players take the moment to look at a very beautiful card, whether it's your card or your opponent's card, it's always just like, nice card. Here we're going to be seeing him take the Albion, and then he's going to be able to overlay, because Albion's a level 8, which is very handy for this, you know, going into the 38. And now we have the... 38 effect that can steal and redirect attacks. We have the Stargus and the next XYZ material 
is attached, it can pop a current. I don't think it's going to come up. A quick synchro and then the regulus negate as well. So some very nice stuff in hand here. And he set one card as well, so we're like, oh crap. And we know he has Lily Borea, which is going to be targeting the Duke and attaching it. So I don't think he has any cards left in hand here. He's the full board, and we have to think. How can we play this? We do have a Super Poly in our hand as well. We're going to draw for turn. And we have to think here. You know, none of these actually add up to be the same, really. We have a number 38, which is a Light Dragon. We have a Sargus, which is a Machine of Fire. Lily Boreal, which is a Plant Wind. Um, zombie, which is a Zombie Dark. Shigurja, which is an Earth Psychic, I believe. And then Regulus, which is an Earth Machine. Show it to Todd for that one there. And so here we're looking at our deck. We're like, wow, there's no targets here for this. Like, realistically, I would want to get rid of the number 38 as well as the Regulus. And then the, my problems, air quote, is solved. I guess problems ish, but uh, we're gonna activate two. We're probably here, most likely getting rid of the Sherry Kuchai as well as the regular stair. So, getting rid of one negate and the quick sink, um, going for the muddy mud dragon there, getting rid of that opening that we do not need. We do have a luber in hand. We're gonna activate the effect of uh. Muddy Wood Dragon calling darks. So the reason why we do this now is because we are hoping to uh, not bit out and negate, but like if he has something that like the trap guard that is face down, he won't be able to stop our Luber. Um, so we're gonna play Branded Lost here, and we're gonna read the number thirty eight, making sure that uh, that you know, can, can he do anything to this? So it's it doesn't it negates the activation, so we are fine. He could steal the uh. The branded loss there. There were a normal something luber. I turn the effect. He can't actually uh, flip up that trap now anymore. That I, I suspected he had. I mean, we don't really know, but I mean, that's really the only trap that they would have. So we get to search for. I believe it's branded fusion here. Branded in white. I was like telling him we are playing the brand of well we already have brand infusion in hand so uh, so get ready for some shenanigans here here goes oh my god you just already had it and then we go activate the brand in red starting off right off the bat like we're not even using branded in uh branded fusion here he goes oh my gosh you know adding that albaz back being able to just dis destroy two cards and draw one and with uh that's kind of crazy here going to chimera we're going to be able to activate the effects of Chainlink 1 Chimera, Chainlink 2 Branded Lost to uh, pop two cards, draw one, then add, well, first off, we're going to add the Mercurier there. And we're adding the, uh, that makes sense, yeah, we're definitely adding the Cartesia there. We have Branded Fusion in hand. Then we get to draw and pop two cards, which we're going to probably pop the number 38. And then the field spell, definitely. That field spell is so sticky. You like, want to get rid of it ASAP, practically. So we have 38 in the field spell here. Definitely makes sense. And we're going to see the Ecclesia be pushed something out because we do have the uh, Albion engrave. And Albion count as Fallen of Albaz. So then we're actually with the Branded Fusion here. And he goes, wow, good job. You just had it all. Um, sending the Albaz as well as, I presume, a Tragedy. Perhaps Lubellion as well could be useful here, you know, deciding what we're going to be making. And 
looks like we are sending the Dark Magician here. He goes, what? But it is Lubellion. So you're already making the Lubellion. He goes, what the heck are you doing? Um, but we're just using it so we can make uh, the Lubellion here. And then Lubellion's is best going to activate. We're going to be discarding the Retribution. And then we're going to be putting back the Albaz as well as the Dark Magician into our decks here. To be making the Red Eyes Darkness Dragoon. That's right. This card is back, baby. Yeah, that card is such a problem here. We do have the pop as well, which is kind of crazy. And he takes a second to read it. I think this is the first time Max actually is facing a Red Eyes Dragoon. Because he goes, wait, and it gains a thousand as well? What the heck? So we're going to pop the... Uh, the Sargus, make him take 28 here. Um, and then we can activate the effect of a Cartesia to fuse with the Lubellion as well. Which is kind of crazy. And if we wanted to, we could Retribution, add back Brandon Red, set it. <sighs> Talk about cracked. The cool thing with Lubellion as well is it can shuffle back um, Chimera. But what kind of sucks here is it like it now it's in the graveyard, so we only play one of it, unfortunately. Um, and then we're going to activate the effect of the... We activate the effect of Cartesia to fusion summon into the Granganol. And this card's going to be able to send any uh, any level 8 or higher, which we're going to send the Garua here. Then Garua's going to let us draw. We are playing the Super Volley build. That's why you see the Garua as well as the Mighty Mud Dragon. Then we're going to activate the Branded in White. Vanishing. You definitely do the Albion. You don't want to have... Oh yeah, we are turning the Albaz, so we're fine here. Going for the Mirror Jade there, and uh, yeah, this is a pretty hefty board. Um, Chimera cannot attack directly. Do two Branded and Red, but it can attack this turn. We'll be able to activate the effect of Mirror Jade there to banish. Um, and then he goes, yeah, I couldn't even activate this Trap card because you had, at all points, the, uh, the stuff... And, but yeah, we end up taking up game one here, which is pretty crazy. Um, just showing off the power of Branded definitely is a... Uh, like, he played extremely well, putting up that crazy board. We just had too much there to, uh, to end up beating it. Uh, yeah. But, you know, we still have game two and game three as well. Um, Brandon definitely has a little bit of a struggle playing, going second, I guess. If you want to consider the fact that like, our opponent can set up stuff, it has a horrible matchup against Floodgates. And just being able to set up interactions and stopping like, the key points, like stopping Brandon Fusion, um, there's just a lot of like good choke points in the deck. So you have to kind of be careful when you're playing it. I, I think the deck is like it's very good because um, it's super consistent. But the problem is that's just simply that uh, it doesn't really win like... Ash Blossom kills the deck. That's why we call like Ash Turbo, F, like Ash FTK. We play like four cards in the side deck to stop Ash. If they set up D Barrier, you don't have Cross Out, then you know, you get screwed over on that as well. It's just rough. So here he's like, Oh, nice Starlight. So then we show him, you know, with the flex. Shout out to Simon for that second one. We pulled one of them. And then on the opposite side of Canada, one of our buddies pulled one as well. And he has shipped it to us. So big shout out to Simon for that. He also sent us the OG sleeves when he was in uh, when he was in Europe. He got us those Nebula sleeves from Dragon Shield when they were not available in, in Canada. So, and here we are entering game two here. Can you see that the punk player is going to go first? Um, looks like we don't have much hand draft. We're going to see Ziyaman being normal summoned. You're going to pay that 600 life points. So you're searching for a monster card. Uh, searching for that foxy tune. You do have the aggro in hand as well, which is a pretty... Unfortunate. I think they only play one of it as well. We're gonna have to take the ogre dance here, searching for another monster. I wonder if this is probably gonna be the deer note. Yeah, searching for the deer note here. Uh, 
I think, I mean, is that two Foxy's in hand? I don't, I don't really know where the combos here. See, Jerno activating, revealing the, uh, revealing the, um, the Wagon and summoning out the Wagon here. We're going to chain the Ash Blossom to the Wagon effect, you know, playing six and we don't want them to be able to draw more cards. Uh, and I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the stops to two draws are pretty good. Um, we're going to see Shark which I being summoned out by that Foxy Tune. Then we're going to Quick Sync or, or Fusion Summon into the Fish Guy. And then we're going to see Deer Note Summon back out. Or not Deer Note Summon back out. We're going to see the Fish Summon out two monsters here. And then we are going to say Nib. In this case, we don't have a Nib. We just pretend to pass another token. Um, he's going to search for the Trap card here with the Amount of Spider. Uh, it was summoned off here. And I feel like Ash is like a weird card versus Punk. Because you don't want to hit like a Foxy. I mean, Foxy is a pretty good hit, but like, and you know they have already enough. It's not the greatest hit. Being able to stop that Wagon like really does hurt like two of the draws if they don't have the spell, which they'd activate first because, you know, tr free draws are good. It's like a playing game, I kind of feel like. I don't know. You get really hard punished as well if they already had the card. I don't really know what they can make with this hand as well. Like, There's not really much. They can Synchro Summon here into... The the, uh, uh, the new Mantis card that's going to be able to search here. And then we're going to be seeing that uh, Deer Note's going to summon back out the Fish Guy, which is you know normally your target to choose because it cannot get this field. We're going to see that dump the Lily there. Then we are going to make our rank 8 Sargus. Sargus is going to be able to search here. I think they're still going to search for the um, Empress, which is another free body. I mean, potentially they can just search for the regulars if they cut down on the bodies, which they might have done. No, it's going right here for the regulars right off the bat. I wonder what they cut down on the thing post side. There, there you have this Coliseum in hand, it looks like. That makes sense. Can I actually this Coliseum here? Searching for the... Um, the Duke there. Maybe you just don't make the Sargus at that point. If you already have the, the, the field spell in hand. I'm not too sure, to be honest. I feel like that like is just a weird play. Like If you have the field spell already, should you put the Duke there? Um, it makes sense. I think this guy's playing two, two Regulus, if I do believe correctly. We're going to see Regulus effect targeting the Lily and summoning herself out. I think that's going to be a pass there, unless they do the... Uh, the Duke can target any of the, uh, the Punk, or not any, but most of the Punk cards summon itself out as well but is that really worth it at the end of the day we are going to see that this is going to be activating it targeting the yaman to equip to summon itself out and then being able to set one card and passing i would assume trying to set up that quick synchro with the duke and the uh shari huchai currency standby phase main phase Then we're asking what the card effects here. Then we go imperm in the battle phase, targeting the Sar uh, the Regulus. And he goes, "Wow, it's, I guess it's like in this moment, it's a better habit. Like, what are you gonna do? You definitely negate with Regulus because then you're getting more cards off the field. If we do have the." Uh, The evenly and 
And so he does negate with the Regulus there, and he's actually going to send itself to the graveyard. So the little warrior goes as well. And then we do proceed to end of main phase, and he just doesn't have it. And we do actually have it. Oh my gosh, we're just a better player here. We must have drawn that imperm for turn, because that's crazy. I just feel like you keep... We know what the trap is already. I feel like there's just no good option what you keep here. Like... Keeping the trap, say like the negate is all right, I guess. You know, you are just keeping an imperm, but you're gonna be on top deck mode here, which is like kind of rough. They were at 50 branded fusion, and we just wow. Summoning at Lubelion as well, or sending the Lubelion and the Albaz. So going for that Albion here. And then Albion effects going to activate. Would you chain the Imperm or the Gabu, which is going to access the Imperm? I don't know why that Brand of Fusion is still on the field. It should be in Graveyard. Um, we're going to be swapping out the Lubelion for the Albion. Then the Lubelion effect is going to be able to set or place a continuous branded Speller Trap, which is going to be for the Beast. A lot of people have cut Beast, but I think it's still a pretty decent all right card. Then we're going to set one, and during the end phase, Albion is going to be able to search or set us here. I'm going to set a Branded in red. We do have that Albaz in Grave, so there's a possibility of us going into like a Albion or a Lubelion or a Guardian Chimera here. And then we're going to simply pass our turn on that. He's going to activate the Argo system here. Shuffling or adding back the um, the regulus to his hand. Then you can act with the regulus effect targeting the most likely the Lilaboria. I don't really, I don't really think there's any other target in the graveyard for it. We're gonna think on resolution here. Uh, I, in response, he's we're gonna let that go through. So we're gonna see that coming. And now, unfortunately, now we do not have any. any there's no way you chain branded and red to that now you have your battle phase here and we misplayed beast is only during the main phase unfortunately so that's kind of rough for us we're going to activate the branded and red he's going to chain uh the regulus to negate and then he's going to set a card and pass i don't know really why he's setting the card but We're going to start off by activating Brain Infusion. He's going to chain the Regulus there. And yeah, I don't think we have very much on that. He's going to pass on that. Maybe we shouldn't have. He's going to activate a second Regulus targeting the Lilyboria. That's someone out there. That's just crazy. He's going to enter Battle Phase and attack us for the... I think it's 31. And pass. We're going to some of the Luber activating the effect here. Let that go through. And we're going to search for the branded and white. There's, just, I mean, I think you just, I guess you don't negate the uh, uh, Luber because then you just like negate the what he searches for. We're going to play branded and white here, which is going to be able to choose and summon. Um, but we're going to see the. Lily Boria being used as a negate. Uh, I mean, like, you kind of want to like, make, like, let's say we search Rand Infusion there. Then you just made sure that all our Rand Infusions are now in the graveyard and they're going to be dead. And then we're going to pass on this. He's going to activate the Duke, summoning out um, the Duke and then the Regulus. And here we have to think. And, you know. I think we have super poly set. We looked at our extra deck. He's going to attack us with both of them, and we're going to have to pass on that. Kind of unfortunate there. Or he's going to just attack 
and make us take some life points. I don't really think we have anything like this is uh this is kind of rough. Yeah. He's gonna branded beast, or he's gonna use the duke to pop the branded beast. Activate the Lubellion. Wow, he got lucky there. Being popping the Duke right before Lubellion draws crazy. I'm gonna search for the Soren near here. It's gonna get us another chance at uh at the maybe being able to activate some stuff by sending to the graveyard. We're gonna summon out the uh Soren here by banishing um the Foxy. And we're gonna tag out into the um, Lubellion there in defense position, trying to protect ourselves a little tiny bit. And then we're going to activate the Sorinir effect, and we can look at the graveyard, see what we have to send. And to be honest, he's going to negate that with the regular. It's not trying to, you know, let us send those, uh, sending the regains to be able to set it up again. Looking at the graveyard, we're going to put that branded lost on the field here. And then we're going to pass our turn. It's going to normal summon out the Ziyam in here. We have to think. We're going to change Super Poly. And those are both Earth. Getting rid of that uh, opening. Summon out the Muddy Mud Dragon. And he has nothing on this. I feel like you just keep the Punk card in hand. With that Field Spell in hand, to be honest. And then we're going to be seeing the effect of Law searching out for the Mercurial there. Kind of weird. We're not searching for the Cartesia, but... We're gonna draw for turn. Activity Brandon lost our branded opening, getting rid of the Mercurier. Summoning out the Aluber in the final position, activating the effect, searching for the branded opening. We should have just added it to hand, then normal summoned it. Searched, so it's just an attack position, because we are getting close to game here. And then we're gonna activate the branded fusion here, dumping the Albaz and the you definitely don't dump Cartesia. The tragedy going for Lubellion in a Attack position. In attack position, Lubellion cannot discard. You do not have a card in hand. Um, we are going to be getting Tragedy and uh, Branded lost here, though. Searching for the Cartesia as well as the Adlib there. So we're going to see that being searched here. And, you know, we don't have a discard for the Lubellion, so we cannot do that. We're going to turn the uh, turn two into attack position. This is just a whole misplay. All we're going to activate the effect of the Cartesia. Cartesia is going to be able to fusion summon here. And that's going to be enough for game. So he just scoops it up. And we see Brandon taking it off. You know, being able to, um, like, being able to like, just push so much stuff uh, through that is kind of crazy. The deck goes kind of hard. You know, opening some of those good cards were definitely good. And I guess Super Poly is not that great versus Punk. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace.